Hello, everybody, and welcome into the Manny Ray's Noma Truck Series live from the Brickyard. That's right, it's Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and another good one in store for you here tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. You're watching, well, not only Austin Green, but we got a co host in the booth tonight. We saw him racing a lot, not last season, or excuse me, not only last season, but of course the season before that due to the work schedule. Not able to race this season, but we got him in the booth for a couple of races, tonight being his first official start. And now, before we get any further than that, Let's go ahead and introduce Matthew Dyer. Dyer, how are you feeling here tonight? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm excited. You know, it. You know, even looking back to last year, this race was pretty close and pretty tight, and it all comes down to how well can you take care of your tires and track position. So I'm super excited for today. Absolutely. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get rolling with your starting grid here tonight. Wesley Phillips puts himself on the pole with a 52-4. Rolling off on his outside, it'll be Joey Hickox in the number three truck. Kevin Winker back on the outside, or excuse me, on the inside in row number two. Chase Greer to his outside. Zach Stevens in fifth. Kenneth Redinger sixth with David Trailer in seventh. Bill Hales in eighth. Riley Gomes in ninth. And Keith Prince rounding out your top ten. And yeah, then starting in 11th, we got Clinton Woodley. Well, starting next to him is Clayton Contrell, M Michael Lawrence, Justin Barham, Aiden Liu, Justin Binley, Matthew Fritz, Ronnie Morrison, uh, Brody Binley, and also Jay Stinson running out your 20th position. Nick Wood will roll off 21st, Mark Beverly in 22nd, Ryan Gomes 23rd, Haas Beverly in 24th, Sam Batwell 25th with Wiley Cantrell in 26th, Jeremy Beal 27th, Derek Cat in 28th, Randy Benomi 29th, and Dylan Paws rounding out the field tonight. He will start from that 30th position. Well, again, we are at the Brickyard. A little bit of a special race here tonight. And so let's break down the race info for you. It's the H&H &H Tractor 188 here for the Noma Truck Series. 75 laps, the scheduled distance. Everybody does have 75% fuel, six sets of tires in total. You do have that one fast spare in your pocket if you need it. Fixed setups as always, and then stage one ends on lap 15 at the end of lap 15. Stage two at the end of lap 40. And then as always, we do have three green-white checkers just in case we were to need them. Track temp, well over 100 degrees. In fact, 117 here as we get this race going. Track length, 2.5 miles, 72 degrees outside, 10% humidity. Clear skies and winds at 2 miles per hour. Absolutely, and the stage one is only gonna be 15 laps, so we can make it because the fuel window is about 20 to 22 laps, so they got plenty of fuel to make the stage one. Certainly do. That means we're going to get a lot of aggressive racing from the drop of the green all the way through these first 15 laps. But this place, it is a cheese grater on tires. So you're going to have to take care of the tires, especially over the first handful of laps or so. Here we go. Rolling into the Geico restart zone. Green flag is in the air. We're racing at the Brickyard.
Side by side, down the back straightaway, but already fanning out further back. Three, maybe four wide. Nope, going to stick three by three. Up for the lead, though. Two wide as Kevin Winker trying to steal second from Wesley Phillips. Your pole sitter, Joey Hickox, was able to hold enough momentum on the outside until they got to the back stretch. Now he takes the lead, but, boy, Kevin Winker getting tight on the inside. And I don't think we're going to see too much passing here tonight, Dyer. But if we are, it's going to be during these restarts. Yeah, absolutely. You really have to take a take real big advantage of those fresh tires early on. Otherwise, this is going to be really a choo-choo train the whole way. Because once the tires go away, you cannot make a pass, especially on that inside. And so far, things are starting to single file out just about as you'd expect. But further back, you still have a little bit of two-by-two two action. That's the 16 of Justin Bentley. And on his outside right now, the 69 of Ronnie Morrison trying to make something happen. The 32 of Aiden Lund. Watching these two go at it, seeing if one of their momentum stalls or both. He can make a move. Matthew Fritz further back than maybe we were expecting in terms of the qualifying effort for the 29. But already this field starting to get pretty stretched out as we got a battle for the lead up front. The 46, Wesley Phillips to the inside of Joey Hickox. And Alpha turn number four here is where you're going to have to have the momentum if you want to set up a move for the front straight away. Nothing doing. Wesley Phillips is going to fall back a spot and tuck back in line. Absolutely. You know, I think Joey knows the importance of the clean air, so he wants to get out in front, take care of his tires, and really just make the other guys do the hard work and try to pass him. Yeah, I mean, that's what you got to do, right? Kevin Winker here taking a peek. Notice you just mentioned clean air. Best way for that 42 to gain any ground here on the three truck is going to be to get that nose out in clean air. The best way you can really do that on one groove racetrack like we're at tonight with Indianapolis is just to get to the corner a little bit sooner. And the guy in front, caution is out. Trouble further back in the field here. Not sure exactly who this one entails. Looks like it might have been Randy Bonomi in the 66 truck. Ooh. It looks like there was a little bit of trouble in the back with the 55. May have been having some trouble. And then Sam tried to check up for him. And the 7 of Wiley Contrell just went straight in the back of Sam. I'll have to go back and take a look at it. And, but, yeah, there you see the damage to the front end of Wiley Cantrell. So that certainly proves that he was a victim in this one. As that could be his fast spare gone here before we even get to the end of stage number one. So let's go back here and take a look at exactly where this thing all goes wrong. In that picture, you already see the 66 had slid up the track. But this doesn't start there. This starts all the way down on the entrance to turn one. As you just heard Matthew talking about the trouble with the 55. And the trouble starts with Ryan Gomes. And it looks like Sam Boutwell here for Grandstand Racing. We're going to go to the chopper view first. And looks like Ryan maybe initially here is going to poke out to make a move. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, he ducks out of line. And then I think he realizes that that's going to get really, really tight if he tries to send it off in the corner as much as it looked like he was going to. And as he starts to check up, Sam Boutwell running really close and just not able to get the memo in time. He runs into the back of the 55 and gets sent down to the apron. And it looks like he's able to save it, though. It's a phenomenal save, but... That stack up involving the 47 allows the 7 there of Wiley Cantrell to get a big run up on the incident. He's not able to avoid it, already committed to the lane. And once they find each other's bumpers, that's a huge hit for the front of the 7. And then that sends him up the track. 47 that is. And as he goes for a spin here, out back, Randy Bonomi's trying to miss it. And looks like he's going to go for a pretty harmless spin himself. I definitely think it's one of those things where it's if you are in the back and you know you may not be getting stage points, like do you risk holding on to the damage and waiting until, you know, the end of the first or second stage and then finally use, you know, your fast repair? Yeah, it's a tough call because, of course, everybody wants some stage points. But, yeah, I completely agree. It's kind of that risk versus reward scenario. So we'll have to see. But. I mean, man, when the damage is as bad as it is for the seven, I just don't know if he can hold off. I could certainly see a guy maybe such as Sam Boutwell here, as it looks like for the most part he was able to hold on to this truck. Uh, he may not have to use a fast pair. Same deal for Randy Bonomi, Ryan Gomes. But I think if we're going to see anyone have to use one, it's going to be Wiley Cantrell. This again, looks like he certainly took the biggest hit in that incident. All right. Back up front, five laps complete here at the Brickyard. It is Joey Hickox being scored as your leader. Kevin Winker, second. Wesley Phillips, third. Kenneth Redinger in fourth. Chase Greer, fifth with Zach Stevens in sixth. David Trailer in seventh. Riley Gomes, eighth. Bill Hales in ninth. And Clinton Woodby running out your top ten. Now, we do have a couple of guys down the pits. And, of course, most of them, the ones that had damage, Ryan Gomes, Randy Benomi, Sam Boutwell, Wiley Cantrell. Now, Matthew, we did talk about the fact that tire wear is going to be an issue tonight. you got to take care of your stuff. But... 
you know, five laps in, the tires, they're certainly feeling it, but I just, I don't think this is one of those scenarios where guys can just go in and keep putting on tires, because even though six sets sounds like a lot, you always want to have at least one to two backup sets if we get a couple late restarts in this race. Yeah, absolutely. I think you want to hold off on them, because you definitely want to use them, like, later on in the race, because I think it's going to be about an eight-lap shootout, and you're not going to be able to gain as much ground as you think you would if you were to pit, and it's not, it's not fully worth it. Definitely when you look at the schedule and the tracks that we've already been to this season, this is one of those tracks that you really need probably to be in the top five to have a chance at well, any sort of finish, whether it's for the stage or for the end of the race, because you're just not going to be able to make up those spots like you would at other tracks that maybe have multiple groups such as Auto Club. So again, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how much of a role that clean air plays here for the rest of stage one for Joey Hickox. That draft, though, a big factor as well. Again, 2.5 miles in length here is the Brickyard, and those straightaways, similar to what we would see at Daytona and Talladega, they allow for a lot of drafting action. That's how we can see guys fan out after they get a run, but also a lot of different tandem pushing going to be going on, but I'm impressed with Wesley Phillips so far. I mean, Matthew, over the last couple races, we've seen him doing a phenomenal job, showing a lot of speed. Takes a pole here tonight, and so far, still hanging around the top three. Good-looking run so far for the 46. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I never got to race with him, you know, sadly, but you know, from what I've seen so far from watching all the other broadcasts, he's put in some you know, phenomenal work. And, you know, to, you know, to touch on like what you said earlier about, you know, the drafting, this place is almost similar to Pocono where you, you may not be the fast or you, you may not be as fast as the other guy going through the corner, but you can still keep up and t keep touch with the guy with the huge drafting down the straight. And just to look at the numbers, the first there is that first few run there joe hickox had an average three lap of a 57.5 his next fastest competitor was kevin averaged a 58.0 so joey the first three laps showing he has a very fast truck yeah and clean air is certainly helping with that now as important as that draft is, of course, as the run goes on and the tires wear out, that draft, the effect to a degree, it almost seems like it starts to fade just in the sense that you can't stay quite as close in the corners. And we know that the closer you are, the more draft you get. So it's going to be interesting to see again. Looks like when we go back green here, it's only going to be, I believe, just about eight laps to go to wrap up stage number one. So I think we're still at that point where you can pretty much push for just about all you're worth without having to worry about the tires completely going away. But at the same time, if you're one of these guys that can utilize the draft, save a little bit of tire for maybe these first five laps or so, maybe set yourself up for the last two to three laps and have a chance to make a couple moves through the field here and potentially steal a stage win. All right, here we go. Pace car makes its way off of turn number four. Going to make the left turn for the second time here tonight. First restart of the night. And the field going to be in the hands of Joey Hickox and Kevin Winker. One of the longer waits that we get in all of the season, all of the circuits, if you will, from the pace car pulling off to when we hit the Geico restart zone. All that green anticipation flag, builds flag. up as we see the green flag back in the air. Good restart for the inside. Looked like a bit of a checkup on the outside. That's going to actually amplify further back. And that does allow Kevin Winker to surge out to the lead before they get down to turn number one. Interesting choice for Joey Hickox to choose the outside there, but so far it doesn't look like it may be the right call here early. Yeah, it almost seems like he kind of got a little bit caught off guard. and Maybe he was expecting the green flag to go as early, but that definitely opened it up the door for Kevin, and he's taking full advantage of it. Certainly has, and single file up front, as you see Kevin Winker snaking all the way just about down to the grass. That's him trying to break that draft, and the effects that it provides that we talked about and further back, you got two, almost three wide action. There's Justin Bentley on the bottom. Oh. Ronnie Morrison in the middle. Oh, my goodness. That was a big moment towards the middle of the pack. And up front, these guys are going at it themselves. Joey Hickox fades back a couple of truck lengths. He'll try to grab a draft down the front stretch. And when all these guys start s in and out, it starts making things a little bit more dicey because the runs are going to be greater when they get there. But right now, Kevin Winker just doing all he can to fend off the three down the straightaways. I think right now he's a little bit better in the corners. Yeah, Joey almost had a, almost a run at him going into turn four because he got a little bit wiggly out of three and kind of glanced the wall a little bit. That's one thing with Indy is you start off the run very loose. you got to keep watching out of the corners, make sure you don't loop it. As the run goes on, it gets super, super more tighter. And still single file for your first five, but now the rest of the field in a similar formation. There is a couple guys trying to make a move all the way towards the back, including... Jeremy Beal in the 44 machine. He's looking to see if he can roll by the 99 of Dylan Paws. And by the way, two of the trucks that we do have in the field here tonight, of course, with Dylan Paws and 
look like going a little bit further up, David Trailer. They're on quite a bit of mileage today. They ran the 12 hours of Sebring earlier today. I believe they finished P4 for that race. So the point being that they've already ran plenty of miles, not quite on an oval, but you know they're going to be a little bit tired here tonight. And Trailer kind of made a comment, which I thought was a little funny. He said, the truck's going to feel like a tank when I get in later after, of course, running the super lightweight and high downforce prototypes. And right now, maybe struggling just a little bit as he finds himself back in six. But overall, he has grabbed the position since he started this race. So as that long single file draft train continues to slowly split up more and more, watch for David Trailer, guy that we like to see or a guy that likes to save tire to maybe start moving towards the front. Absolutely. That's one of the things I noticed when I raced him last year and the year before is he had sensational late run speed and I just don't know how the, how the guy did it, but I know exactly what he's talking about because I did the Sebring 12 hour today too. And it is a world of different type of class racing. So for him to jump straight from that into this, oh yeah, my hat's off to him. 42 of Kevin Winker still leading the way has now led the most laps here of the night or will if he can lead this next one when they cross the line this time in the 42 still leads Joey Hickox by about two truck lengths. Joey was closing back up as you see it's still a two truck draft and interestingly enough sometimes I think everybody has different views on this method here breaking the draft some people feel like it doesn't do much but you know Kevin Winker continues to do it lap in and lap out and while Joey follows him looks like the guys behind who haven't has started to fade away just a little bit. Kenneth Redinger just behind him. Zach Stevens and a couple of others. David Trailer in that mix. So we're going to be coming to five laps to go here on the stage when we cross the stripe this time. It's be interesting to see. Can Kevin Winker continue to pull away over the next couple laps? And yeah, there was a massive checkup. I believe that was turn three. The 22 and the 02 got together and a huge checkup for the whole field, which broke up the packs certainly did single file back here Ronnie Morrison's gonna get a run on Clinton Woodby who saw dive it down to complete the pass but ultimately cost him some momentum through the corner here looks like he's gonna fend off the 69 and then back here Clay Cantrell in the 88 again a guy who we really saw his breakout success at least on the ghost racing network where we've been broadcasting Noma races come in the gen 6 series and so we were expecting maybe a little bit more of a fiery start here in the trucks but he's shown some speed so far tonight Still hanging well inside the top 15. Michael Lawrence back in 16th. Justin Bentley just outside of it in 16th. And then Dylan Paul's looking to maybe set up a move here on Aiden Lund through turn number three. Nothing doing there, but as we go back to the front of the field, Kevin Winker now six tenths of a second ahead of Joey Hickox. Kenneth Redinger has broke away from that draft behind. Now he's going to set his sights on the three truck, see if he can't catch this draft in front. But still a three-way battle with three and a half laps to go in stage one. Yeah, starting to that point where the tires are starting to fall off. You're starting to lose the freshness. And this is where maybe you kind of work with someone to get that draft down the straightaways. But like the hard part about that is that once you start losing the tire, you definitely start losing that run down, <laughs> down the stretch. Yeah, and Winker, I mean, he looks like he's on rails right now. You see the truck looks like it's handling very well. He has not missed his mark through the corner over the last lap and a half or so. Joey Hickox looks like maybe just getting a little bit tight right now, especially on exit of the corner. And then just behind all this, we've got a mess and realistically a battle here. And that is the battle for that fourth position. Wesley Phillips leads, but now on the inside, Zach Stevens trying to make a move. David Trailer just behind these two. And we'll see if Trailer is he able to make a move here. The 33 with a beautiful pass gets clear. Ooh. Man, Wesley Phillips gives him a little shot, says, hey man, if you're gonna get clear, Maybe make it by just a little bit more next time. Riley Gomes and Trailer go side by side as a result of that checkup. And Riley able to make some hay on the bottom, but Trailer carries the momentum down the straight and looks like he should be able to grab this position before they get to turn three. Absolutely. I'm also watching, you know, back here in that second group, starting with the you, you Jeremy Bell. Just watching them stay in line. Oh, Dylan starts to peek out. Or like, it, Jay now starts to peek out, trying to go below him getting real racy back here and i'm surprised they're not trying to work together to get back up to the front yeah well stinson wants the spot and i mean we're coming to two laps to go on the stage here so at this point i feel like it is that if you're not close to the front you know working together isn't going to get you there with just two laps to go but there you see the effect of staying in line is oh my goodness jay slammed the door shut right there oh my goodness I'm trying to figure out, i think that was brody benty just behind him it was in the 63 wow that was a big moment as jay blinking a little bit and Looked like for a minute there, Brody 
was not going to lift. He did. That was a very veteran move for Brody because that could have ended very poorly. But uh, Stinson does find that spot in line. The race for the lead still on. It looks like Joey has closed it back up just a little bit. But again, going to be coming to the white flag here on the stage. And I just don't know if he's quite close enough. I think he's going to need Winker to make a mistake. Yeah, I think I think Kevin has done a lot better job in saving his tires because he is definitely faster on this longer run. See that fresh air has definitely come into play where he's starting uh, for this 10 lap average. He's about a, just shy of a 10th faster than Joey over the run. So he's definitely doing a way better job of, of keeping his tires fresh. Kevin Winker sees the well, not the green and white checker, but just the white flag for now here in stage number one. And Joey going to try to set this corner up a little different. Now, this is a technique that you can do. The problem is you hear there on the cockpit view, those tires, they're worn out. He is scrubbing them as hard as he can, trying to get the truck to turn down. It's just not doing it. And oh, caution is out. So it looks like Brody Venti trouble further back. And so this thing won't quite race all the way to the finish. Wow, that was a close call for Wiley Cantrell as he arrived on the accident scene. Brody Benty gets back rolling here as it's like a little bit of damage to the left side door, but that's about the only spot I'm seeing it right now for the 63. Got to think that that means maybe he got some help down into the corners with somebody on his inside, but looks like maybe something a little different here. Let's back this up and take a view of it. And there you see this is on exit of the corner. Jay Stinson on the inside, Brody Benty on the outside. And, ooh, the 63, he tags the outside wall, and then when he bounces off, Comes down into the 31 of Jay Stinson. That sends the 63 around. Down to the apron, he'll go. And when he slides back up, this is where things start to get a little scary. Ryan Combs just able to sneak by. And then the 63 starts rolling down the track. And oh my goodness. I don't know how Wiley Kentrell managed to miss that one. Yeah, I think that's just a, just a product of you know, the older tires. You, you think you have more grip than you do, and it just starts to give it away. But, I mean, that really just chopped up to, I believe, an eighth. To really a racing, isn't it? If you, you're both are racing super hard, trying to, give, trying to give each other space, but not a whole lot of space. And you just make one small mistake, and it just goes from there. And I feel like Indy in general, you know, since you just brought up the tires, and I want to bring up this point about the tires, is a little bit interesting compared to other tracks that we go to in the sense of normally your truck over a run is either going to get tight or it's going to get loose. But, you know, here it feels like, and I know you could probably speak to this as a driver, Matthew, it almost seems like it gets a little bit of both. As the run goes on, you're wearing those front tires out, so it's really hard to get turned out of the truck late in the run. But at the same time, you put just a little bit too much wheel into it, and then the back end starts to slide around. So you just got to really try to kind of manage it as a driver it's hard to do but starting to see some of the signs of that wear and tear early there with the 63 just uh, getting tight on exit and that wall certainly comes up pretty quick on exit of these corners yeah absolutely you know, and to, to speak on that more it's it starts out loose so you think you have to you know be very careful with it but as the run goes on it will get tighter and tighter but the more you turn the wheel the more it it turns the wheels and that when and that when it catches, that's when it starts to snap loose, and you have to be careful on that. Absolutely. Well, pit stops underway. Everybody just about that was not staying out to try to get a lap back or something of the sort has brought it down to the pits. And in fact, it straight up looks like everybody brought it down to the pits. So interestingly enough, everybody's showing you just how important tire wear is from the driver's perspective as well as they all took four tires and fuel. But a little bit of a shakeup here on exit. Kevin Winker is going to lose two spots here to Joey Hickox and David Trailer. Well, it looks like 54 maybe with trouble as the 42 pulls ahead of him. But that's good news for Joey Hickox because we saw the speed that he had when he was in clean air. Same deal for Kevin Winker. And with that being the case, I think that's really the main battle right now, especially on these restarts, is just who can get the clean air. And if you can hold on to it for maybe about five, six laps, then all of a sudden the tires start to get some wear on them and it starts to be a little bit easier to manage your position. Yeah, it is very easy to lose time on pit road. There is a little trick to getting in and out of your pit box. What I have found out in the trucks is if you can have your your RPMs in first gear run around between 4,400 and 4,800 RPMs, you can get out of your box more smoothly than anyone else. You can kind of get up to speed quicker. But if you spend your tires on pit road in these trucks, you are going to lose spots no matter what. Yeah, so, you know, good heads up driving there by Joey Hickox, making sure that even while we're under caution in a pit cycle, 
Still trying to see if he can gain some spots, and it certainly pays off. Well, before we go any further, let's see if we can get a quick word here, potentially with your stage one winner, who, by the way, was indeed the 42 machine of Kevin Winker. Showed a lot of speed there towards the end of the stage and was able to hold on until we got that caution that ultimately ended the stage. Let's see how he's feeling right now. Hey, Kevin, this is Austin and Matthew up in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, you get the stage one win there, and it looked like you were working. Almost looked like what we see the IndyCars do here, snaking the draft down the front and back straightaways. But overall, once you got the lead, it seemed like you were able to keep it, contrary to what we saw in the first run, where it seemed just as tricky to get the lead. How is the truck feeling so far, and how big of a role have tires played for you here tonight? Uh, it's feeling pretty loose, but it's kind of expected with the hot track temperature. Um, tires are definitely... You, know, you gotta kind of manage the right front because you burn the right front off but uh clean air is huge here so if you can get off front and break that draft it's really hard for the guy to you know get get past you and then if he can get beside you it's really hard to pass here so i think clean air is going to be the most critical part tonight to parking in victory lane when we go back green i believe it's going to be somewhere right around 26 to 27 laps to go in stage number two and as for fuel mileage do you think you can stretch it that far or are we going to see a green flag stop this time uh, you definitely can't make this stage here, so you're going to have to pit here once you get a couple cautions. So it's be interesting to see what kind of strategies guys pull and all that. So be interesting to see how it plays out here. All right, well, you've kept yourself in good position up to this point. We'll see if we're talking to you here again at the end of stage number two. Sounds good. Thank you. There you go. Kevin Winker, one of the Asphalt Outlaw Racing drivers, saying himself just how important track position is and how important the clean air is. But, you know, with the pit stop on the horizon this time, that does shuffle up the strategy a little bit. I think we'll see a little bit more tire saving, but I think we're still going to get a very aggressive restart right here. Here we go. Joey Hickox on the outside. Kevin Winker on the inside. David Trailer, Wesley Phillips, row number two is the field. All gets situated. All gets up to pace speed. And here we go. Working back to the Geico restart zone. Green flag back in the air. 19 laps complete at the Brickyard. Absolutely a much better start from Joey. And now, like, he's starting to be on the outside, but you're just looking at two by two by two. Uh, how long can they stay like this? They thought about three wide further back. I couldn't tell if that was Redinger. No, that may have been a couple spots even further back. And I think it might have been Ronnie Morrison who gave a thought about going three wide on the outside in the corner. I think he quickly realized that was not going to work. And so they'll shuffle back down to two by two. It's really, you're just trying to find a spot in the train. I mean, you know that... You can maybe pick off a spot or two on this first lap, but ultimately you've got to get lined up with everybody else. If you're the odd man out, whether it be getting stuck on the inside or the outside, you're going to lose track position and you're going to lose it in a hurry. But how about the job that Joey Hickox has done on about this first three quarters of a lap to retake the lead? Now, Kevin Winker, he doesn't want to let that stand for too long here. He's got to run. Will he take it on the three truck or does he push him down the front stretch here? Definitely, as the beginning of the run, if you can work some with, with the leader, you and him can pull out a huge lead. But I don't know if you noticed, when we were talking about him earlier, David Trailer started to make his way to the front. He's going to be a factor like later on. He certainly will be in 20 of 75 laps now complete again. The end of stage two is set to come at lap 45, the end of lap 45 rather. So 25 laps plus the two that we've ran so far are still to go cannot make it all the way in terms of fuel mileage so definitely see you guys have to come in and now the question becomes do you take four tires do you take no tires do you take two tires if it's for a stage win matthew i feel like there's kind of that risk first reward in order to allow yourself to play some strategy calling but it'll be interesting to see if anybody tries that out or if they all just come in and again take four tires and fill up with fuel I think it's going really good. If, if you are Joey, you are kind of waiting for Kevin, or do you, or do you are the one going to pit before Kevin? Because I think if you're further back in the field, I think you come in earlier, take four tires, and play your gamble. But if you are towards the front, you're kind of waiting for the people around you to start pitting. But then that's when you go. Because when you start pitting too early, you kind of run into the chance of maybe a caution, kind of ruin that strategy. But the fresher tires are always going to win here, so I think you're going to have to be the last one to come to Bay Road if you're towards the front. I agree with that strategy, but on the other end of it, I think if you have clean air, there's just, of course, no way that you can come in first. And I know you said that if you're further back in the field, it's a good idea to pit. And yeah, I would completely agree. You said it, short pitting and getting fresher tires is the only way to really gain ground. 
when it starts to become a stalemate as it's becoming right now. The 32 of Aiden Lund jumped out of line there. Stevens tried to make a move as he got tight going through the corner, and Stevens quickly had to bail out of it. He jumped back down the line just in front of Clay Cantrell. Matthew Fritz and multiple others still hanging single file for the moment, but it's going to be Haas Beverly who now jumps to the inside of Randy Bonomi. And we did see Haas Beverly with a great run. And last week here in the Noma Truck Series, but Randy Bonomi was the one who was involved in that first caution. And so he's had a pretty good recovery up to this point, up to 23rd, up a spot from where he started this race at. Actually up seven for Bonomi, up one for Beverly. So both of those guys still going in the right direction as they're pulling a draft ahead. But up front, here we go, battle for the lead. Kevin Winker, Joey Hickok side by side through the short shoot down to turn number four. Joey trying to hold off the 42. He's going to have to put it on his door if he gets alongside, but he won't. And so Kevin Winker, who tried to make the move work off of four there, no dice, and he'll have to settle back in down the front stretch. Absolutely. It's the golden rule of defending. You want to pinch that guy on the bottom so that he does not quite get the run off so you can get that run on the outside. But it's one of those things where as Joey continues to run that outside line, that's going to burn his tires a little bit more and it could even open up a chance for Kevin to, uh, to get in later. It is, but at the same time for the 42, every time that he goes to make a dive in, you know, we see this and we talk about it a lot every time we're watching these Noma Truck Series races, especially as the run goes on. But in general, whenever you make a move on a guy and that move doesn't work out, that is tire that you have just burned off that you don't have anymore. So each time that you make a move, you're burning more and more tire. And that move is going to be harder and harder to complete until at a certain point, you may just not even be able to make that move. And you see Winker, he tried it again, but the fire out of the pipes telling the story, just not able to quite stick the momentum down the front straightaway as Joey's able to get a little bit of a pull here. And that pull is just enough to get him separated by about half a truck length down into turn number one. Absolutely. Like one thing, if you notice too, when they start to battle, it keeps the guys behind them pretty darn close. So if Kevin wanted to, he could work with Joey, pull out an even bigger lead, and then you fight on later. But right now, as you can tell, like he wants that lead. Yeah, clean air just way too important to just be kind of letting somebody else have for the entirety of the run. He tried to help a little bit early on, and you know I think that got them to enough of a lead here to allow him to do what he's doing right now. But this time, he might have a good chance of going into turn three. It's going to be Joey who has to bail. Saw the fire out of the pipes trying to hang alongside. He will now, but speed getting scrubbed off here down into turn number four. He's still trying to hang even. Can Winker get clear off a of four? He can't. Oh, Joey skims the outside wall. The three, though, able to hold momentum. It's still a drag race down the front stretch. Absolutely. But if you notice that they're, as they're battling, it has brought Justin Barham and the rest of the company even closer. So now it's even a bigger dogfight. Yeah, and as these guys do get closer, that'll allow one of those two lanes to get a draft from behind, an arrow push, if you will. So we'll see which lane here Justin Parm decides to go with. Grandstand racing back at full strength here tonight after last week only having Justin Parm, and he did a good job. He was able to hold down the fort and, of course, got the win. And so looking to see if he could potentially go back-to-back -to -back here tonight at the Brickyard, one of the crown jewel racetracks, similar to getting a win at Daytona, but Winker is still able to make it work. And I'll tell you what, Matthew, I know that them stalling each other out pulled these guys up there, but I think also them wearing their tires out here as they continue to battle might allow a guy like Justin Parham, Wesley Phillips, or potentially Kenneth Redinger to make a move here in the next lap or two. Absolutely. And if you notice... Uh, Justin Barham is up 11 places, so he has made up a lot of ground, and that truck is very quick. Clay Cantrell pits his caution is out. Here in trouble down the front. Ooh. Oh, big wreck. We got three, four, five trucks already collected. That's Michael Lawrence with the smoke out of the hood for the number 12 truck. As now everybody's going to try to maneuver around. Looks like they do. Ooh, Aiden Lund pulls up last second. But they're all able to get it sorted out, it looks like it can continue on. And what in the world has caused this one? Seemed like everything was relatively smooth. By the way, that was not Aiden Lund. I apologize, that was Jeremy Beal in the 44. You see, he's got fr heavy front end damage. All right, well, let's go see exactly how this thing gets started. It looks like it's gonna get started with them trying to fan this thing out four wide. We've already seen three wide a couple times here tonight. Four wide, a little bit more risky of a scenario and doesn't always work out the best, but Looks like this almost starts from a stack up here. And it does. Clay Cantrell as he goes down to the pits here. Clinton would be. I think he has to bail out of the throttle ever so slightly. Let's see if that's indeed what the case was right here. 
Yeah, I think that may be exactly what it was. And then the 97 fails, but as the 92 checks up, that allows these guys to get a run. Jeremy Beal's going to take it three wide, and then 69 takes it four wide. The two up top just honestly kind of run out of room. I mean, the 44 is sitting so close to the door of Chase Greer. The left rear, I should say, that he just eventually, I think there's maybe just a little bit of net code involved there, but it hooks the 8 to the left, and once he gets back into the 44, that sends a 44 hard into the inside wall. There's no safer barrier there, so certainly going to do a little bit more damage, and then Rex on from here. Everybody's just trying to miss it. Woodby slides up into the outside wall. Ronnie Morrison, Michael Lawrence with nowhere to go as Woodby gets tagged. 99, Dylan Pauls, I think, was able to avoid most of the damage from this one, but still a couple of tags here and there, but you know, overall, just really tough racing and maybe a little bit of miscommunication there in the sense of guys not realizing that they got four wide. Absolutely. And if you go onto the onboard of Nick Wood, he just squeezes through the smallest gap and just was able to avoid it. Yeah, and just before we go back and take an onboard view, giving you a couple more angles there of the hit for not only Jeremy Beal, but multiple others here, as you see the 29 of Fritz, nowhere to go. He tags Clinton Woodby and then the 12. Hits him even harder. That propels the 92 up into the air. And then there's the shot on the inside wall from Michael Lawrence, the one that ultimately destroys his truck. But let's indeed head on an onboard view here with Nick Wood in the O2 truck. And hold your breath through this one. Sees him wrecking. Goes to the outside. They start to come back up. And thankfully, he only had to dodge one truck. But that was a split-second decision. The decision was the right one it works out as he's able to miss a spinning chase greer and as a result keeps himself in contention watch this from the tv view as he somehow sneaks by this there they go they wreck to the inside the o2 up top here comes the eight of chase greer and you heard him he never really let off a bunch just kind of shoots the gap here and things work out the 16 justin bentley tried to follow the same gap and unfortunately that's how quickly things closed up so a nice job by nick wood but a big wreck here Pretty early on in stage number two has put us back under caution. Up front, it is Dylan Paws being scored as your leader. Clay Cantrell second. Kevin Winker back in third. Joey Hickox fourth. And Justin Parham rounding out your top five. We are going to take a quick side-by-side -side break. We will be right back for the restart. Stick with us here at the Brickyard.
Welcome back to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's the Manny Rays Truck Series with the H&H &H Tractor 188 here in the Brickyard. Here we go. 30 laps going to be complete. Now, we did have some strategy play with that last caution. Clay Cantrell, Dylan Pauls, now your leaders. A little bit older tires, but there is a chance here to capitalize on some stage points. It is 16 laps to go in stage one as Clay Cantrell tried to get clear of the 99 and get to the bottom there before the exit of one. He wasn't quite able to do it, but now Joey Hickox will draw even with the 99. Kevin Winker making a thought here of if he wants to go three wide, and he's going to wait till the exit, but he's got no choice. There goes the 42. Looking to the inside. Now the 99 will jump up two by two further back but here we go race to the lead is on clay cantrell on the outside joey hickox gonna duck to the inside into turn three absolutely joey knew he had to push clay all the way out front and now he's trying to take advantage of having cars between him and kevin but right now clay doing a very good job of holding that fresh air he is and you know fresh air kind of one of those things that can cancel out old tires but only for so long, so we'll see how much the time. Oh, we got one in the wall out back. Haas Beverly's going to go around the 22. They all scramble to miss him. Oh, my goodness. We got another hit on the inside. Michael Lawrence is going to get involved in this one as well. And now this will put us on the stage. Driver out of Ohio. That was not pretty. It looked like he got some help, at least from the live view. Let's see if that was indeed the case. As we'll back this one up. Go to the chop review before we go any further. And watch as you see Haas, he's on the inside here of Bill Hales. Now those two racing, of course, the Asphalt Outlaw Racing Truck Series together. And yikes, looks like from this view there, I, I got to put that one, I think, on Bill Hales. Matthew just looks like, I mean, there's clearly a link to the outside, but he just kind of really runs into the right rear there of Haas Beverly. I'm assuming that... I don't I don't think he was trying to give Haas a push because obviously he would have been trying to get more center. I'm thinking he was trying to jump to the outside to get a side draft and maybe just misjudged it a little bit. And unfortunately, as a result, it just, yeah, straight hooks the 22 pretty hard into that outside concrete wall. And then everybody else, we talked about the mad scramble to miss any time they wreck. And it's not very wide down the front stretch here, of course, with that pit wall. So you don't have that many options in the seven. Of Wiley Cantrell, tag the outside wall. He's going to come down, but the big hit goes to the 13 here of Derek Cat as he tags the concrete wall, and then Michael Lawrence slides in. He's also got nowhere to go. So, you know, just another one of those things, hard racing, but an unfortunate deal for Haas Beverly and Michael Lawrence and a couple others that were involved in that one. Absolutely. You know, it's one of those things where at the start, you want to take advantage of your fresh tires, but you also got to know that you can't win it right now. You got to give people room and just put yourself in a better position later on. But yeah, you, you definitely got to give people room on this front stretch. Like I know you can make it four wide, but you don't want to go any more than three, but you definitely got to give more room there. And boy, I'll tell you what I feel for Michael Lawrence. That one, of course, just had to use his fast pair and comes back out and immediately gets damaged. But, you know, I've been in some of these positions before in the case of Bill Hales, but I, I completely agree, Matthew. It's just a little bit too early. Got to give a little bit more space than that. If it was the end of the race, I get it. You're going for everything. You got to get that really tight side draft. And again, well, we know it was completely unintentional. That's still a really unfortunate incident and a pretty big hit for the 22 of Haas and Beverly. You see the 0-2 of Nick Wood. He slides his way through another one. Great wreck avoidance tonight for the 0-2 as the 22 works his way back on track. 32 laps now complete. Clay Cantrell leads the way. Joey Hickok second. Dylan Pauls in third, Wesley Phillips in fourth, and Justin Parham rounding out your top five. I want to take a moment to acknowledge everybody tuning in here tonight. We certainly appreciate it. Tower operator says, Winker Nation, Nancy Hickox, good to see you in here. She is excited to see Matthew Dyer back in the booth. Billy Bentley, glad you're watching on TV. And James says, hi, everyone. New to the channel. How are you? Well, it's good to see you, James. We are doing just fine. Hope you're doing good as well here on a Saturday night. We appreciate you being here. The 88 of Clay Cantrell. We talked about it, Matthew. Strategy worked out. And with this caution, you know, I think this actually helps him because the less laps that we have to run in the rest of this stage under green, the better his chance is going to be to maintain that track position because, again, his tires, while it may not be by much, they're still more worn out than Joey Hickox and company behind. So it's going to be interesting to see how much longer he can hold off the charge from the three and a couple others. But good news for him is that Kevin Winker, he's back to 10. And the question now is what happened? To the 42 that got it back this far 
Uh, from what I saw on the on the cameras, he got loose coming out of four on the front stretch uh, during that last sequence before the caution. I think it was like a lap before the caution, and he lost it, almost ran into the pit wall, and just lost all the momentum down the front stretch and lost all of that valuable track position. Yeah, it actually was the lap of the caution. We just watched it. Man, what a save that was from Kevin Winkers. That's part of that kind of contradiction that we did talk about earlier with the trucks, of course, getting loose and tight, depending on the way you run them. You said, Matthew, that they get loose early on, but they're going to build tight. And certainly looked to me there like Kevin Winker had his hands full, but a great save. And unfortunately, though, that loss of track position is going to hinder him potentially for the rest of this stage. Lights off on the pace car, so getting ready to go back green. And when we do, looks like it's going to be, I believe, just about 12, 13 laps or so. Yeah, 12 or 13 laps here to the end of the stage. So now one thing that we do know for sure is everybody's good to go on fuel. Question is, who saves tire here and who starts going for it right out of the gate? Absolutely. One thing that helps Clay is that when he came into the pits, that's when the caution came out. So he didn't use very much of his tire. So there's maybe like a one really maybe a one lap difference in size of wear but it even though it's not much it's definitely a lot less wear but you got to give it to all the guys right now in that top five top six any one of those could possibly get this stage win right here certainly can by the way at the back of the field michael lawrence he was able to make a return back up, back out on track looks like the damage is still there for the 12 truck though so that's going to bring any chance of a good finish to an end here tonight for Michael Lawrence, but still going to trust out here and scrap any Green points flag, he can. Flag. Green flag is back in the air. It's going to be 13 laps to go here. Actually make it 12 laps to go in stage number two. A little bit of a checkup on the outside, but looks like everybody able to get things sorted out. Down into turn one, two by two. Joey Hickox on the inside. Clay Cantrell on the outside. This time, though, Clay not going to hold it on his door. Looks like through turn two, he will a little bit more. Joey Hickox trying to get a run. He puts... The loud pedal to the floor. Leslie Phillips, he's going to have a big run. Who does he go with here down the back stretch? Looks like he's not going to go with anybody because the run wasn't quite big enough to get him to the back bumper. But again, Clay Cantrell showing that stellar defense is somehow he was able to hold off the charge yet again from Joey Hickox. Wesley Phillips, who settles into third. And that's for the rest of the field. They're quickly single filing out. Still got a little bit of double file action as everybody gets those big runs off the corner using the draft on the straightaway. And we're going to see a couple passes here. In fact, looks like the 31 of Jay Stinson is going to try to pick off a spot here. This is back in the battle for 12th. Mark Beverly in at 12th currently. He's up 10 from where he started. Another one of the drivers that ran in the 12 hours of Sebring earlier. So he's certainly getting... Plenty of racing in for the day. Now we get almost three wide with Justin Bentley, Matthew Fritz, and one other. So while the up front group, a little bit more tame this time, the back half of the field is still going at it here with 35 laps complete. Absolutely. I think you're at, at a stop right now where you have to use up all of your tire. You do not want to save any of your tire once the stage car comes out. So just like Jay and all the all these other who are trying to make moves, you want to use all of it right now. I'm still shocked that Joey has not been able to quite close the door on the 88. It just, it continues to make me think that more than anything, more than even tires at this point, I want that clean air here tonight. Because it just seems like it has been so important to maintaining the lead. Kevin Winker, Kenneth Redinger side by side. This is the battle for seven. So Winker already starting to pick up, or make up rather, a little bit of ground from that close call near spin that he had on the same lap that we got that last caution. Keith Prince looking to make a move around the outside, and he's going to complete it. Boy, what a move that oh. was. Oh, Helen's sliding. Tags the inside wall. It's Dylan Paul from the 99. It was only one, but it is going to draw the caution. This pulls back up on track. Oh, my goodness. Oh, now he does again. Michael Lawrence has to miss it. Wow, that was another really close call, but Dylan Paul is not a lot of damage. Does have some to the right side and the rear of the truck. Again here, Matthew. Another... Well, I'm not going to say an early caution in relativity to the race. We're almost halfway there at this point, but certainly one of those things where, you know, it's towards the back half of the field here, but these guys were racing pretty aggressive. So I kind of wonder if there wasn't some contact involved in this. You see the 99 on the outside, Stinson on the inside. That looks to me there like maybe Jay just kind of washing up the track here on exit. 
And, you know, to be fair, it just, it really does look just like another hard racing incident to me. I mean, the 99 of Dylan Paul's, yes, he's holding his line, but at the same time, he's got a little bit more room to go up. And in Jay Stinson's defense, we know that, yes, he's moving up the track. And of course, he gets into the 99, but he's got to wash up a little bit. That's just the way these trucks drive around here. They get tied on exit. And I think there that if, you know, Dylan's maybe up another quarter to half a lane, there's a pretty good chance that. They don't make contact. It's just a really close battle off the two and maybe a side draft down the back. But nonetheless, once these two do get together, it's going to send the 99 for a ride here. The truck rotates all the way around, which I think kind of helps his case here as he takes a shot into the tire barriers. You see it does crumple up the back end, but better to have damage in the rear than the front as he goes for a slide. And then when he came back on track, boy, it was a hold your breath moment for a couple of drivers, including Michael Lawrence, almost got involved in another one. Yeah, I think you almost, I, I don't want to put the blame on Jay, but you almost kind of have to. I think Dylan kind of gave him enough room. But I, I, if, you, he, if he goes up anymore, I think he almost kind of hits the wall a little bit. So I think Jay had plenty of room. You almost look at the replay too, and Jay had a little bit more room to the bottom where he could have went down. But I, it, it, you want to say race it is, but it could go either way. Certainly could. Both guys potentially at fault, but nonetheless, the 99 with damage, he'll try to get this fixed up. And, you know, and before we go any further, I do want to take a ride on board here with Jay Stinson so I can tell you kind of what I'm talking about and show you exactly what Matthew's talking about here in terms of, you know, as a driver, you always have choices. You always have options. And sometimes there's an option on whether you want to lift or stay in the throttle here. Let's take a listen to Jay Stinson. Yeah, he stays in the throttle there. I, I think that he just, I mean, from that view, and again, it almost looks like they're not quite going to make contact. Well, it does at the end. So at the end of the day, yeah, maybe the 31 just thinking that the truck was going to turn a little bit more off the corner. Doesn't. It's a really unfortunate break for Dylan Paul's back to front though. Clay Cantrell still being scored as your leader. He's up again, 11 in total where he started this race at. Joey Hickox currently in second. Wesley Phillips third. Riley Gomes at fourth with Ronnie Morrison in fifth. Matthew Fritz sixth. Jay Stinson in seventh. Ryan Gomes in eighth. Stan Boutwell ninth. And Bill Hales running out your top ten. Yeah, I do. I think they're going to have one a one lap shootout. So I think it could go either way. I think Clay, if he gets the restart right, I think he will have a very good shot because I have yet to see anyone take the lead or pass someone up here at the front within one lap. And actually, officially going to go down as a two-lap shootout as the end of stage two is at lap 40. Oh, I take that back. You are correct. Didn't realize. Thought we were on the one to go right here. But, and I do apologize, by the way, earlier. I think I was getting it confused there. I know we read 40 in the race info, but I think for a minute I forgot and was thinking it was lap 45 was the end of stage two. So, yep, it will indeed be a one-lap shootout if they get the one to go single right here, which it looks like they do. And so now, maybe this plays more into the favor of Joey Hickox. What do you think right here, Matthew? Um, I think it's a, I, you know, it's hard to tell you, say, but I think Clay did the right job of picking the outside because as long as you get a good start and hold on to that momentum off the outside, you can definitely keep and hold on to this lead. But I, Joey has been so quick and so fast. That you, but also another thing quickly, is that you have to also rely on the person behind you because if you can get the person behind you to give you a bump going down in turn one, that will shoot you off with huge, huge momentum as well. And I mean, even if Clay Cantrell were to lose a couple positions here on this restart, let's say things didn't quite go the way he had planned, it's still a win at the end of the day because he's still going to be getting a pretty good finish and while being on older tires at that. So I think the biggest thing here in terms of the big equalizers that Cantrell knows he's going to be going down to the pits here with everybody else at the end of the stage. So that will put him back on equal tires, but certainly will still be able to maintain his track position based off wherever he can finish this stage out at. So you got Joey Hickox, Clay Cantrell making up row one, Riley Gomes, Wesley Phillips in row two. Matthew Fritz, by the way, the man who raised Mafia machine, where did he come from? He's now up 12 positions from where he started this race at. Again, up and rounding out your top five. And then it's Ronnie Morrison in sixth with Ryan Gomes in seventh. All right, working through turn number four. Pace car sets himself up. He's going to make a dive down to the pits as we get ready again for a one-lap shootout. If they wreck, though, and the caution comes out, that will also end the stage. Cantrell versus Hickox here at the Brickyard. 
to decide your to decide your stage two winner. Pulling back up into the Geico restart zone now. Joey's going to have to try to get an even jump here with Clay. It's his best shot. Green flag back in the air. Three truck gets a pretty decent start. They're all spinning tire behind him. And man, Clay Cantrell did not need that. He really needed a push. This might allow the three to get clear before they get to the short shoot. Absolutely, but he's starting to fight back with the outside momentum. Let's see if he can keep it around turn two. But one thing I'm also looking at is Sam Batwell has the freshest tires of these front runners. The last spin on lap 31. Like, let's see if he can do anything with those fresh tires too. Back in eighth, just don't know if there's enough time because this is the white flag here in stage number two. Joey Hickox going to take one more look to the inside. Down into turn number three we go. The three truck going to have to use his momentum trying to push the 88 up the track. The 88, though, able to get even more momentum into the short shoot. Final time off of turn number four. Cantrell versus Hickox. Could be a drag race as Joey has to bail. It's not going to be enough. Not able to tuck in line. He may lose another spot. But coming across the yard of bricks, it is going to be Clay Cantrell who gets the stage two win in Indy. Uh, what an absolute battle. Both of them going absolute for it. And a huge you know, showmanship and just absolute driver control by Clay to hold on to it. They're coming out of four. Absolutely. So... Not only does the tire strategy pay off, but he also grabs a stage win and he's going to get track position. So this was about a win-win scenario as much as you could make one for Clay Cantrell. Absolutely. I think you know, before his before that strategy, he was all the way down, I believe, like the upper 20s. So to go from 20 to spot up to first place and get the stage win is a huge deal. Very impressive feat to say the least. And now again, everybody in the field going to bring it down to the pits here. Four tires and fuel. Potentially a couple stragglers that might stay out, such as maybe Sam Batwell. I doubt it, though. We'll see because we're going to take a quick break. We'll go side by side so you don't miss the thing. And when we come back, we're going to get an interview from your stage two winner. Stay with us at the Brickyard.
Welcome back to the Yard of Bricks, Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the H&H &H Tractor 188 for the Noma Truck Series. Drivers getting ready to go back green for the final stage. But before we do, let's get a quick word here with your stage two winner, Clay Cantrell. Clay, this is Austin up at the booth. Got a copy? Yes, sir. Well, man, you played some tire strategy. First off, was that the plan? And second of all, how did you manage to hold off Joey Hickox there with older tires? Well, I'm going to be honest, it's the second time I've done it this season. I uh, came down pit road there, uh, took fuel and tires, uh, only to realize that I had uh, fuel check, but no fuel to go in the car. So I had to come down and take fuel. And then, I mean, it's just one of those things that got really lucky that when I came down to take fuel, I mean, they, they wrecked after I had crossed the open pit road. So came out smelling like a rose. Uh, track position is definitely king tonight. I mean, it's you got to be <laughs> you got to be on the top i mean you can't it's really hard to pass on the bottom so track position is definitely everything and just had enough speed to where we could hold them off right there at the end but now we had that caution with uh you know a couple before the stage ended so it's kind of split everybody i mean i've got we've got 14 guys in front of me that have only ran two laps on on fresh tires so it's gonna be really hard to dice through the field but we got 32 laps to do it so we'll see what happens well, I had a follow-up question, but you answered it right there with how you're going to get through the track position. Now, a little bit curious here. How do you plan on playing out that final pit stop? you think it's somewhere around halfway, or do you try to undercut this thing? Uh, I think I'm – I mean, unless the leaders start coming, I'm going to split the stage just to optimize the tires. Uh, looks like we got about 32 to go, so you'll see me coming down about 15, 16 laps. Sounds like a plan. Well, we appreciate you talking to us. Congrats again on the stage two win, and we'll see if we're talking to you at the end of the race. Thanks, man. All right, there you go, Clay Cantrell. And, you know, interestingly enough, Matthew, and I, I kind of didn't think about that, but, you know, when you mentioned Sam Batwell, and then, of course, it kind of brings up the topic of the guys who did decide to go in there and then stay out. So now that we've got that strategy mix-up, it puts some of the guys who have had speed all night back towards the front of the field. Kevin Winker, David Trailer, Kenneth Redinger, who, by the way, maybe this is a bit of a surprise that we have not seen him in the lead yet here tonight after he's already got multiple wins on the season. But I don't think that's all we've heard from the 24 yet tonight. Again, he's still going to have just about 31 laps to go when we go green right here. So still plenty of time to get up to the lead. Absolutely. You know, this being his teammate last year and just seeing what kind of competitor he is, he does not like finishing second. So I, I fully see him being right here towards the end. And, it, and, he, and you know he wants that win. Regardless of how many he has, he always wants another. Yeah, I mean, he's already got a couple championships. What's another win to go with it here? We go for stage number three. David Trailer on the outside. Kevin Winker on the inside. Green flag, green, green flag. flag back in the air. It's a good restart for the outside line, but Kevin Winker going to start to fight back. Which lane's going to get there first? Can Redinger give a push to Kevin Winker? Oh, we got one going around out back here. Couldn't tell who that was. Randy Bonomi hard into the inside wall. And I wonder if he had some sort of issue there. We saw him hold the wheel to the left. I'm thinking he got some help here. I wonder if this was a byproduct of another checkup on a restart. Seen that quite a bit tonight. No, I think this could be a technical issue. Let's go on board here. Yeah, it looks right, like well, he's trying to, try to swerve out of the way of them and has kind of just lost control of it. Yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing here from the cockpit view. But actually, I want to go back to that view. Listen, it almost sounded like maybe did he downshift? Yeah, it's, that's a really interesting one. But yeah, I agree. I think he's trying to swerve, but it seemed like maybe there was also something else that went along with it that got him that out of shape is now cautions out. As we go back towards the front of the field and the breakdown where this one happened at is it looks like Bill Hales and multiple others involved in this one. We got three to four trucks stopped. Joey Hickox for Venom Racing, one of the drivers involved, and now Bonomi slides in. About 30 seconds after the wreck had occurred and biggest hit comes right at the end and 46 laps complete so didn't even make it around but one time here going back under green when this caution came out well, let's see exactly what gets it started here joey hickox i think this may start just in front of him we're gonna go to the blimp cam actually we're gonna go to the chopper cam first and watch they get three wide here and yeah you know we've seen three wide a couple times tonight on the straights and that's usually okay three wide Coming off a turn, that usually doesn't work out too well. 
See Stevens on the outside, the 13 of Derek Cat in the middle. And then there's Clay Cantrell on the bottom. Riley Gomes has a run. He's going to jump up to the inside here, but do the 33 and the 13 just get together? No, it's actually the 9 and the 13 who end up making contact. And then that sends the 13 up the track, gets him into the 33 of Zach Stevens. That gets Stevens out of shape, trying to save it. And then, ooh, Joey Hickox gets him out of shape here as well. I think, does he run into the back of the 13 maybe? Looks like that's yeah, what... Yeah, he did. He had nowhere to go and tried to check up. And this, the momentum just took him in there. Ooh, man, that was a big, big hit too. For a couple of guys who had nowhere to go. And then, as we talked about, about 30 seconds or so after this wreck was over. Maybe not quite that long. Make it 10 to 15. Here's the on-rushing Randy Bonomi, who's going to try to sneak by the outside. And then as Bill Hills moves up. 66 locks up the brakes and slides in. Maybe a couple more angles to this one here. First from TV3. Yeah, there's some, there were some big hits in this one too. I'll tell you what, Matty, this is going to take a handful of fast pairs for the guys that still have them. And I see a couple of trucks that I saw in a couple incidents earlier, and you start to wonder if they all have fast pairs at this point or not. This could certainly shuffle some things up and could potentially bring a couple of these guys' races to an end. Let's hop to an onboard view here with Joey Hickox through this wreck. Such well, actually, a hard hit there on the inside, too. Hey, it's, a, you know, it's unfortunate for Joey to be in that position, but hey, it's just it's such a struggle. And here's the view from onboard Randy Bonomi. You hear him, he's checking up, but I don't think he was expecting the 53 to go up, so... That's really just a tough break for all these guys that were involved. And this was the biggest wreck of the night that we've had so far. So we look at one more angle of it. Talk about that big hit for Joey Hickox as he got T-boned as he hit the inside wall. Zach Stevens as well. All right, so as we do indeed go back live, 47 of 75 laps now completed here at the Brickyard. So well over halfway, but at the same time, still plenty of racing to go. Just as we get the green, I think we're going to have about 26, 27 laps still left under green flag racing. So still expecting a green flag pit stop, at least as of this point. Question is going to be, when do you go in and who goes in first? But as things stay right now, David Trailer is being scored as your leader. Kevin Winker in second with Justin Bentley in third. Kenneth Redinger fourth. Justin Parman fifth. Mark Beverly sixth with Nick Wood seventh. Keith Prince eighth. Jeremy Beal in ninth. Chase Greer running out your top ten. Yeah, we see quite a few uh, on, on these restarts. It seems like everyone, all the leaders, are trying to take that outside. So far, the only person that we've really seen get that outside to work was Clay during those final restarts before the end of Stage 2. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if uh, David you know, can make that outside work. Certainly is. Well, while we have a moment here, let's talk just briefly about... What points are looking like at this point in the season? Again, three races complete in total. This is race number four here tonight. Auto Club last week. And the man leading in points at the moment is Bill Hales. Just behind him is Keith Prince, followed by Mark Beverly, Justin Parham, Chase Greer, David Trailer, and Jay Stinson. So, you know, I feel like there's maybe a couple surprises in the top ten for points. But overall, no surprises in your top three. Those are guys that have been fast all season up to this point. And the consistency is showing right now. A couple good runs tonight, but Bill Hales on the opposite end of the spectrum. He might fall in points with the way his run has been going at this point tonight. And then looking at the schedule ahead, where we're going to head next after tonight. We go to Michigan. That'll be next week. Another two-mile D-shaped oval, similar but a little bit smoother than Auto Club. That race will be 95 laps. Looking forward to that one. After that, we head to Talladega Super Speedway, followed up by Darlington. Then it's Pocono, followed by Kentucky and Charlotte on May 18th. Going to be rounding out the regular season all-star race at New Atlanta. And we'll talk more about your playoff races next week. All right, pace car working its way off of turn number four. It's going to be 49 laps complete, so that's going to give us exactly 27 laps to go here at the Brickyard. Kevin Winker on the inside, David Trailer on the outside, Bentley, Redinger, row two, green flag back in the air. Yeah, it's still too early to make it from here on, on fuel, so it's going to be interesting to see if anyone tries to maybe save a little bit, maybe... But I, it's too much, too much time lost to make it from here on fuel. 
Tell you what, Trailer looked to me there like he had a chance at a crossover, thought better of it. Instead, he's going to try the long way around. He tried to sneak to the outside here of Kevin Winker, and he got it. What a move there by Trailer. He knows that he can carry more momentum, but it's not going to be enough to get clear down the straightaway. Justin Bentley trying to give him an arrow push down into turn number three. It's still, unfortunately, not quite enough yet, so they will stay dead even through turn number three. Winker now loses the advantage into the short shoot. Coming off of turn four, this is where things could really set itself up with a big opportunity for David Trailer. Now he's going to get clear of the 42. New leader, first laps being led of the night for David Trailer. Looks like Justin Bentley is going to try to follow as will Kenneth Redinger in that third spot if he can get by the 42. And if you're Kevin Winker, you got to find a spot in line. It's like a freight train, and it is leaving the station. Absolutely. And uh, oh, that's oh, good. Uh, Kevin and. And Kenneth almost getting together, but great save by both of them. But going back to what I was about to say is Justin Bentley is another guy who is very good at saving his tires for late in the run. So I fully expect him and David to potentially, if they can save on and hold on to the tires, could be the ones that race for it at the end. But you know that Kevin does not want them to get out too far because he has a lot of speed too. Yeah, in fact, the last couple of weeks, we've seen just how close Justin Bentley has came to getting his first win in the Noma Truck Series, at least for the seasons we've been broadcasting. But things just have not quite worked out. Now we're seeing David Trailer employ a similar strategy to that of what Kevin Winker was doing earlier. And that is that snake-like movement where he's breaking the draft by pulling all the way down towards the inside wall, down the front stretch and near the grass on the back stretch. And it looks like it's working pretty well as he's ga gained himself just a little bit of reading room right now over Justin Bentley, about two-tenths of a second, as a matter of fact. Kevin Winker was able to settle back in third after the close call just a couple laps ago. Kenneth Redinger fourth and Mark Beverly currently rounding out your top five. By the way, he is up 17 positions where he started this race at, so... He's clearly figured something out, and he's got it working pretty well. After that, it's just about all single-file action, at least for the moment. Now, we talked about splitting this stage potentially in half. Again, when we went back green, it was about 30 laps to go. And so, excuse me, 30, yeah, that was about 30 laps to go. So now that we have 25 to go, I think these guys are still all planning on staying out probably another at least 10 laps. But, you know, if you're the leader... I almost think maybe you go a little bit further than halfway. Wait till you see everybody behind you pit so that you can be on offense the rest of the way instead of worrying about being on defense. Absolutely. And one thing that you're really seeing David doing right here is he's starting to pull a gap. If he can start pulling a gap because you can see them fighting each other, that's going to help David to pull away. But if you are Justin, Kevin, and Kenneth, you three want to work together. You do not want David to pull out a big enough gap where he can play that defense. Yeah, and by David getting a gap, of course, that'll also allow him to save some tires. He's not going to have to race that hard to defend these guys off by the time they get there, especially if they keep battling as they are now. But it looks to me here like Winker is struggling all of a sudden. you got to wonder, did he just get himself thrown out of a rhythm or was all the slipping and sliding these first couple laps for Stage 3? Maybe we're out to good years. Ooh, man, gets Ooh. into the outside wall just briefly. That was a hold-your-breath moment for Kenneth Redinger. I thought he was coming down the racetrack and thought we were going to see maybe another caution here tonight, but a good save. I'm telling you, that 42, he really does look like he's struggling right now. And you got to wonder, does that maybe put him as one of the guys in position to maybe think about short pitting here so that he can get a new set of tires and maybe just try to take care of him a little better on the second run? Absolutely. Your first two to three laps is so crucial in trying to save your tires because if you even run a little bit too hard, you're going to pay the sacrifice the whole time during the run. So... You can start to maybe save a little bit more as the time as you see him duck a little bit beneath Justin to get just to get that as you see him get loose out the corner. But he's trying to get as much fresh, clean air onto that nose as possible so that he can try to hang on to those front tires. Yeah, but he's struggling right now. He is warm out, and at this point, I think this is going to start to become damage control for the 42. And just hold on to whatever you can until we can make it to that pit stop. And again, as we stand, at least for the moment, we are about seven to eight laps away from when we would expect the general or majority of the field, if you will, to bring it down for that final stop. And you got to make sure you execute. It is still a little bit of a tricky pit road here. Not one of the trickiest ones out of all the tracks we've been to, but, you know, you're still carrying a lot of speed well over probably 160, maybe over 170 miles off of turn number three, turn four, rather. And so you got to be really careful, making sure you get down to speed without locking the brakes and certainly don't want to accidentally hit that pit separator from the racetrack if you will because that would be a night ender to say the least absolutely and one thing that i have noticed from the indy pit road is that if you can get 
it sneaks up on you very quickly, but if you can get into the pit road very quickly, very hard, you can make up a lot of time, especially on the exit of pit road where it goes around turn one and two. If you can get around those things rather quickly, as we see uh, Kevin dive underneath and still he's trying very hard as he, oh, he tries to get, oh, and he's good thing he had to get out of it because he was about to go into the side of Justin. Yeah, now he might be in danger here of losing another spot as he's under fire from Kenneth Redinger. 24 took a peek to the inside, but the 42 was able to recover enough momentum now. Take a look at the dashboard speeds here tonight of what these guys are running. Again, this is already with some fall off as we've been green now for just over a handful of laps and still over 180 miles an hour down into the corner before they have to get down to just slightly under 160 through turn three. Turn four going to be just about the same, maybe a little bit slower. And then down the straightaway, they put the hammer down. And with the draft, speeds here again, almost about 185, if not almost 190 miles an hour. So a lot of speed, a lot of grip right now, but it'll continue to fade away as this run goes on. David Trailer, though, I mean, how about this? This is the first time tonight, Matthew, that we have seen anybody pull out to over a second, second lead, or excuse me, to over a second lead. And right now, it doesn't look like anybody's been able to track that down. And by being well over a second and a half at this point, he doesn't have to worry about anybody catching a draft either. Absolutely. I think what really helped him is when uh, Kevin was really attacking Justin, it caused them to side draft each other, which allowed David to pull away. But right now, as you can tell, Kevin and Justin are trying their best to bump draft and get up to David. But I think it's almost too late to try to do that because I think David is sitting nice and comfortable. But now it allows Justin to have that fresh air and clean air on his nose. So it allows him to save his tires a little bit better. I'm watching Kevin Winker here. As, tell you what, for as much as it looks like he's struggling, he is still maintaining pretty good pace as he still sits in that third position for the moment. Justin Bentley in second, but he got a little high there. The 42 was able to duck low, got some clean air on the nose, gets a good run through turn number one. Not able to make a pass that time. He'll try to set him up again here. Off at of turn number two, nothing doing. He'll tuck back in line behind the 16, and I agree. Looks like no matter how much pushing they're doing, Trailer just continues to check out. And at this point, I don't think he's wanting to see a caution the rest of what the rest of the way. And it's it's really interesting because that second group, you almost wonder is Bentley to a degree slightly holding these guys up right now because it's about a five to seven truck pack that's all single file, but at the same time all nose to tail. Absolutely, and within this run, always you see uh, Kevin dip down the pit road, and then went. And David, I'm surprised, went down the pit road so early too. I think this was a reaction for everybody else, at least, of seeing David Trailer maybe being just as shocked as we were, but saying, "Okay, well, if he's going down now, we probably need to do more of the same." And I wonder if this is about right when that fuel window opens. So again, a very, very interesting strategy call here for David Trailer. I mean. You know, I thought for sure, based off the start of the run, that if you were in the lead, especially, and this adds even more to the case, in David Trailer's example, he was over two seconds in the lead. You wouldn't really see much of a reason in short pitting in that case. But, you know, a lot of times these guys know something we don't, but really still surprised to see that from David Trailer. Good news here is he is going to come out with the lead and by plenty. The bad news is, again, by undercutting, he will not have the freshest tires of anybody on the racetrack at the end. We'll have to see, though, if that strategy was the right strategy. As now we're going to get some more pit stops. Multiple others are going to peel off here, including Jeremy Beal and Justin Bentley. Looks like we're going to get one more that's going to bring it down this time. That's Nick Wood in the 02. Justin Parham as well. I'm, I'm still really surprised because of that two-second gap. You could have stayed out another lap or two and then pitted and still would have came out with the lead and used those fresh tires to pull out but may maybe they do know something that we don't know but i still think you know you should have waited a few more laps to maybe even like split it down in the middle but right now we see justin and kenneth really working together but man like kenneth really wants that lead by the way, it was Justin Parham who brought us down to the pits, not Justin Bentley. Bentley right now is the man in the lead, but he is under fire from Kenneth Redinger. He's going to take a peek to the inside. See, does Bentley pit this time? He doesn't. Redinger, though, going to peel off. He will join his grandstand racing teammate of Parham who pit last lap. Ooh, big lockup on entry. And I know you noted it earlier, Matthew, talking about how you can gain time on this pit entrance. And I know we talked about it being tricky, but, of course, I agree. You know, it's a straight-on approach. So similar to where we know the trucks, 
They don't like to break too well when you're trying to turn at the same time, but if it's a straight on approach, it's just a matter of how hard and how late can you get on the brakes. And Redinger, I think, just about hit the limit there as you saw the little bit of a lock up and the back end slide around, but he's able to get down to speed just in time, gets into his box. He will take four tires and fuel before he gets back out on track with about 15 laps to go. And now, anybody that's still out on the track this lap or maybe the next couple laps after this, I think is right about the window that we were expecting them to pit. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm looking at the lap times, and David Taylor, or a uh, David Trailer, who did pit last lap, was a 53.3, and the leader Justin Bentley did a 55.7. So there's a two and a half second difference in lap time. So you know, maybe he knew something you know, that we didn't know. But also, just to touch on the getting to pit road, the key to not making a mistake coming down and getting to the pit speed is not going through the gears too quickly. You know, having a sequence through downshifting to where you're not locking up the rear and spinning around. Yeah, and to add to the point about tire wear, I mean, how about that two and a half second fall off? And we're not even at the end of a run here. These guys could go longer on a tire run if they needed to. But that is absolutely, I think that's probably the biggest fall off of any racetrack that we've been to so far, of course, this season, but maybe even last season. That is absolutely incredible as 16 of Bentley now trying to hold off Keith Prince. Sam Boutwell behind these guys by a little bit of a margin. Matthew Fritz, Bill Hills, tucked in line behind him. Looks like Bentley not going to go in this time, but Keith Prince sure is in the 03. We'll see if anybody follows. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, if you are in that front group now, you're kind of hoping for you know, maybe a caution to come at some point so you can kind of get on the same sequence. But maybe you're waiting a little bit longer to maybe pit and use the fresh tires, but I think by that time, it may be too late. And looks like further back, he is going to get a couple of takers that join him. And it looked like it was the 22 of Haas Beverly and the 99 of Dylan Paws. Dylan up 21 positions where he started, currently sitting in ninth. I believe these guys are going to lose a couple more spots than that, though, is Justin Bentley still out on the racetrack. And now I do think we're starting to get to the point where the 16 does really need to bring it in because, I mean, the amount of time that trailers already made up on him, that's going to be pretty hard to gain back especially as we continue to wind down laps. And, you know, one thing you don't want to do as much as you, of course, want to be able to play offense the whole time is you don't want to put yourself in a position where you don't get to use the tires to their fullest before the race is all said and done. Absolutely. And the, with, with the fall off, too, if you get too far behind and you try to really work and really use those tires to get back up to someone, you've kind of negated the advantage that you had by pitting later on. So I think David maybe did make the right call in pitting as soon as he could, stretching out that lead to where by the time people get to him or even attempt to get to him, they've already burned off their stuff. Yeah, and getting to him and passing him are two very different things. But right now, good news for Trailer is when everything cycles out, he will be scored as your leader. And by quite a good margin, Wesley Phillips will cycle out second. Mark Beverly cycles third. Sits in fourth, so on and so forth. So still a lot of shakeup, a lot of things to keep an eye on. But we're not going to have all the final answers here, of course, until everybody has made that final stop. Looks like Matthew Fritz brings it down to Pitts. Boy, he had a big, big lockup. Like for maybe about 50 to 100 feet there, he had the tires locked up. Believe he did get it down to speed okay. As he pulls into his box, he will join his Venom Racing teammates. And their strategy is it's going to be four tires and filling it up with fuel here. I know we had that debate earlier, but I think after seeing the fall off, Matthew, that answered everything we needed to know on whether anybody was going to try two tires or four. Just don't see really any reward there. You figure what? Maybe another eight seconds. But if you're making over three seconds a lap in terms of fall off, that's not really any sort of a gap at all. So not too surprised to see everybody taking four. I think it's the right call. And I think it's going to set us up. And by the way, Fritz here still sitting in his box. I initially didn't think that he got a penalty. I think he did. I think he got a speeding ticket for coming into pits a little bit too hot. It, it may have, but one thing I'm starting to look at too is that is if Justin, oh, like oh, okay, Justin was able to come inside. Now you're now the only other people left out there is Sam, Zachary, and Willie. So we'll see if those three maybe stay out as long as they can and hoping for a caution. Yeah, that's the gamble that you can play, and you know you kind of made your bet at this point. If you're still out there. You're, you're staying out there. I mean, there's just nothing else that's really going to work. And so Sam Boutwell, Zach Stevens, and Wiley Cantrell, all three of those trucks just hoping and praying that something happens somewhere, a virtual piece of debris, anything that can bring out a caution. But 
With things this spread out and the track map further showing that trend, I just don't know if we're going to see one here in the next 10 laps or so once Boutwell crosses the line this time. And in terms of how long they can run here, they could probably, if I had to guess, get another three to five laps out of it in total. Eh, maybe not even quite that much. If they can, well, we'll go ahead and leave it at that for now. Two to five laps in total here. But Sam Boutwell tucks in line behind Joey Hickox, and he stays out yet another lap, as does Zach Stevens and Wiley Cantrell. Ten laps to go now at the Brickyard. Yeah, right now, Sam is about 18 laps on, on his stand, so he's, he's going to be coming in about three laps. All right. Well, Zach Stevens, who sits in second, you got to assume on a pretty similar strategy, as is Wiley Cantrell. But David Trailer, still the man we're keeping an eye on now. He has not captured a win yet this season in the Noma Truck Series, but also has not yet captured a win in the Asphalt Outlaw Racing Truck Series this season. He has come so close so many times. More podium finishes than you could count. More bridesmaid finishes than you could count. But he is still, again, yet to grab that first win tonight. Looking like it could be his night, at least if this thing is able to stay green the rest of the way. Nine and a half laps to go. And again, we have got to make it all the way to the white flag before this race will be official. Oh, what a round. Trying to save it. Who was that? Was that Derek Cat? It was Derek Cat with big issues here. And it's going to bring the caution out. The one thing David Trailer did not want to see is now the 13 gets tagged by Clinton Woodby. And the reaction says it all. He is not too happy about it. Oh, well. I think we gave it the announcer's jinx yet again, but man, it was really interesting that the 13 went around the way he did here. He, he didn't even have any help. He just it gets tight, gets up in the marbles, gets into the outside wall, and then from there, it's going to bounce off, and that's exactly what happens. Just gets up the track, hits kind of that transition where it goes from safer barrier to concrete, and that bounces his truck back down the racetrack here. He's trying to save it as he gets in the grass, try not to hit that inside concrete wall. And he's going to be unsuccessful in that attempt. As you see, the left side does make pretty significant contact. Now he locks it down. But the truck's going to slide back up onto the racetrack. That's what draws the caution. And then everybody trying to miss him. And he's going to pull right down into the racing line. And poor Clinton would be had nowhere to go. Yeah, I just think it's one of those things where I mean, he didn't pit that long ago, maybe about like six, seven laps before this happened. So I wonder if he maybe thought the car had a little more more grip than it did and it just slid all, all the way to the wall. Well, you know, another thing I want to say, which, you know, normally we don't have to make a note of this stuff, but there's been a couple incidents tonight with guys as soon as they wreck, just kind of trying to roll back down the racetrack and maybe not a lot of awareness has certainly caused a bunch of other guys trouble here tonight the 13 if he keeps this thing locked down after he spins and comes to a halt he's fine the problem is here when he tries to get this back rolling i know he's trying to get out of the way but he turns straight down the racetrack and there's still traffic at speed i mean he wasn't stopped for that long and poor clinton would be just had absolutely nowhere to go there so a big hit for him is going to cost him a faster pair as jay stinson chose the outside would be chose the inside and you know, it's one of those things that when it happens, there's just not much you can do. You can't just slam on the brakes, especially when you're already committed to a line. So an unfortunate incident for a couple people. David Trailer, who looked like he was in position to walk away with this thing now, is going to have a restart and a lot more stress on his hands with this caution coming out. Yeah, but two big winners from that are Zachary Stevens and Willie Contrell, who stayed out and were able to stay out during that green flag run and definitely had the help from the caution now they can pit and hopefully they can keep their track position because there's only a couple people staying out but everyone else came down pit road yeah i think the only people staying out are the guys that pit pretty late everybody else went down four tires fuel it looks like just about four tires and fuel here well interestingly enough maybe a, well this is really interesting here because trailer still on the pit so we've got a whole variety of pitch strategies that we're going to see towards the end of this race it's going to be a fun one to call well before we talk anymore we're going to take a side-by-side -side break and we will be right back for the restart it's going to be six laps to go at the brickyard stick with us
Back live at the Brickyard Indianapolis Motor Speedway, getting ready for the conclusion of the H&H &H Tractor 188. Well, we had a chance to talk here over break, Matthew, about what to expect for this ending right here. No more tire saving. Everybody good to go on fuel. And now this is going to get crazy. All about a battle for the win. And we got a couple guys still looking for their first one of the season. Mark Beverly on the outside. Kevin Winker on the inside. Chase Greer, Keith Prince for Venom Racing. Or excuse me, Chase Greer for Venom Racing. Row two. And Ryan Gomes, Bill Hales in row number three. Here we go. Potentially for the final time. Green flag back in the air at Indy. Side by side, down into turn number one, but your leader, Kevin Winker, is gonna be able to pull away just a little bit on exit of the short shoot. Beverly, try to get back to his outside. Now we got more contact further back. Does everybody save it? We got two guys almost running the third lane up by the wall. Boy, a lot of chaos here off of two, and that's Clinton Woodby with all sorts of damage. Now they're gonna fan out four wide as they go around the 92. Looks like everybody keeps it together, but man, the 92 is destroyed. Was this? Did this happen just now? No, I think, you know, that's the uh, repair that he had when he, because remember, he was the one that got absolutely clobbered. That's what I but thought, least, but man, I didn't think he'd be able to get back on the racetrack with that. I thought he either had a fast repair or that he would have got that fixed. I mean, that truck is is destroyed. Yeah, I'm surprised they, they even like, let him back out, but... Like, like, with Kevin, you know, like, getting out front, remember, he did not pit during this last caution because he pitted a little bit later. Oh, trailer gets turned! Oh. Hard in the outside wall goes the 54. Sam Bowell's in it! More in it! This is the big one at the Brickyard. And I hate Some to cut you off there. involved in that, too. Oh, my goodness, I saw it coming, and they're still wrecking. They went three wide. Trailer was trying to keep it down, but he started to drift up, and I saw the contact happening, and... That one was big. Some really big names and very fast trucks all day long have now been shipped to the hauler. Yeah, trailer and multiple others have to tow from this one. I mean, we're going to start breaking it down now because this could take a while. This collected, again, a whole bunch of trucks, but it all starts here with trailer and Sam Boutwell. Let's see if... Trailer starts coming up. Outlaw starts coming down. I mean, first thing, is there three wide here? And we talked about it all broadcast. It's not going to really work too well in the corners. Now, maybe a little bit of an exception with them being on new tires. David Trailer is going to dive it deep into the corner here. He's trying to commit enough to get clear of the 47. Unfortunately, though, it's just not quite enough. And as he starts creeping up, I mean, Sam Bowell, he's, he's there. Trailer gets up into his left front. And then here's the huge hit for the 54. And the 47... He almost gets upside down. The 16 of Justin Bentley. Nowhere to go. The 02 piles in. Nick Wood. And they're still not done wrecking at this point. I mean, look at this collects. I think just about everybody in the back half of the field. Yeah, that was pretty wild. It, it's very tight going into turn one. Like you, three, even though one and three are similar sizes, it seems like turn one is a little bit tighter. And it, you just can't go three wide that deep. But... You gotta give it to him. We are at the end of the race. You gotta take as much as you can, but sometimes you gotta give a little bit more room. But even with going in three wide, it's hard to give room. Yeah, just one of those racing incidents that didn't look like it was gonna work out. Boutwell trying to hold the position. Trailer going for it, and it's it's really a commitment as a driver. I mean, when you go in and that position that Trailer was in. It, he really only had one shot, and that was to get clear with the momentum that he had diving into the corner. If he doesn't, he can try to bail out, but it's, it's just not going to be enough. And, I mean, he was probably about a foot, maybe half a foot from being clear, but unfortunately was not quite clear at that. And once he gets turned up here again, that is a huge hit. 47, all four tires off the ground, and just left everybody with nowhere to go as they all scrambled. Trying to miss it, the 63 of Brody Benty, Jeremy Beal, Sam Boutwell. Collected a lot of big hitters, a lot of guys who were having a good night. And now this is going to send us to our first overtime as well. So as we go back up front, it is Kevin Winker now being scored as your leader. Mark Beverly second, Keith Prince in third. Chase Career fourth, Bill Hales fifth, Ryan Gomes in sixth. Haas Beverly seventh, Kenneth Redinger eighth, Wiley Cantrell in ninth, and Riley Gomes running out your top ten. And... You know, the other thing, though, that, you know, we really hate to see with that, Matthew, and that makes me feel for David Trader in this case is 
he went from, you know, maybe about five minutes ago, a guy who was probably at the highest of highs because he pre he had the race won. I mean, if there's no mm -hmm. caution, I just think he had the race won. And, and unfortunately, it gets buried. And when you get buried and you know you have a truck that's capable of winning, sometimes you have to get slightly desperate. And unfortunately, in that case, things went from bad to worse in a hurry. Absolutely. I've been in that spot so many times when I was in this league before. And uh, sometimes you, you think you you have it perfectly. And then when it, when it does happen like that, you just feel so disappointed and especially so frustrated to where you start to make moves that kind of put you in that spot. But uh, yeah, I, I totally feel for him. You know, it's such a heartbreak. But one person that I really wanted to look at too is Mark Beverly up 20 positions to put himself in second right now. His strategy has also come to fruition. Yeah, I think him and Kevin Winker are the two to watch. And I'm not just saying that, of course, because they're on the front row. But Kevin Winker, he's had speed all night. And then Mark Beverly, again, he's had to have had speed to make up those 20 positions. And so now that he's got himself up here, it's going to be all a matter of can he hold on for what's going to be a crazy last two laps to route things out. We'll remind you of the overtime rules here in just a moment. But before we do that, I want to give you a reminder of where Ghost Racing Network is going to head next. Tomorrow night, we do have money racing. And it is in the form of McCullough Motorsports Money Racing with the Automedics 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. Big payouts, long race, and it's going to be a fun one. So make sure you check it out at some point. If you don't have time to watch the whole race, feel free to stop in and say hi. Certainly always appreciate it. That race will go green, or qualifying rather, at 7 p.m. Green shortly after. And fortunately, the only thing that's, I guess I should say, a little bit unfortunate with that one is that I do not have a co-commentator as I do tonight. And 500 miles is a long way to go by yourself. So not only is it going to be a marathon for the drivers, but it's going to be a marathon for the single man broadcast crew tomorrow, if you will. But looking forward to it nonetheless. I'm going to wish you the best of luck. Make sure you have multiple water bottles for that one, because that is going to be a wild ride. <laughs> yeah, it's Certainly going to need quite a few, that's for sure. But as we get ready, put a green flag for this one. Overtime rules are as followed. If these guys can make it a lap under green to the white flag, this race will be declared official, and we will not have any more cautions. However, if they rack on that first lap and it draws out a caution, then we will rack them up and try it again. We can do that for a total of three attempts, this being the first of those three. So we'll have two more if they can't get it done this time. But Kevin Winker taking the outside, looking for some of the other guys here in the top five to really keep an eye on. But it's, again, all this mix-up and that big wreck that we just had there has put a lot of potential underdog picks towards the front of the field. Ryan Gomes still looking for his first win. Keith Prince, I don't know if I'd call him an underdog, still looking for that first win, but similar to what we see out of David Trailer, Mr. Consistency, and finds himself again just outside the podium. Looking to see if he can jump into it before the end of this race. All right, here we go. Pace car makes a left turn. Now potentially for the final time tonight. And it's time for overtime number one. Green flag is in the air. Two laps to go at Indy. Fanning out already. Two wide further back. Guys fighting even harder for track position. Three wide now. And they're all going to have to get this thing sorted out here before they get to the back straightaway. That's where all the runs start to play out. Kevin Winker on the outside. Mark Beverly on the inside. Looks like Beverly was not quite able to hold on here. He's going to jump up in front of Keith Prince, but it's Winker who's looking to scoot away down the back stretch. Oh, they're three wide. <laughs> Kenneth is going down the bottom, going three wide, down into three. Whoa, it's going to be tight. Oh, my goodness. Oh, up the track. They're wrecking. The seven hard into the outside wall. Is it just one? It is. Everybody else trying to miss. They do, so we're going to keep it green for now. We'll see if he can keep it off the track as we're going to be coming to the white flag. Kevin Winker in the lead. The 97 of Mark Beverly still in second. The gap starts to expand. Does the 97 have enough to get up there? He has 2.5 miles left to try to make it happen. He's going to need a lot of help from Kenneth Prince to get even get close to him. But, but does Keith even help him or does he go for the second place himself? Yeah, he's not going to really have much of a choice here. I think at this point, maybe he bails out, goes for second, because it doesn't look like they are going to catch the 42 at this point. Just too much speed in the late run. Kevin Winker with just one more set of corners to go, and he will be crowned the Noma Truck Series winner. Looks like he's going to go through turn three clean. 
One corner to go down the short shoot into turn number four. The 42, what a roller coaster of a night it was. Started out with speed, had to go to the back. Handling wasn't great through the middle, but at the end, he got a break, and the handling is there now. First win of the season, and it's going to come at the yard of Bricks. Kevin Winker wins it at Indy. They fan out three wide behind. It's a photo finish for second, but it goes to Mark Beverly and Keith Prince. Rounds out your podium. Wow, what an absolute drive from Kevin. Even though with the adversity there in the middle of the race, he was still able to pull it all together and get, put himself in a fantastic spot. And what a drive those last two laps to put himself on the top, on the top spot. What a win indeed. Well, as he brings it around here before he celebrates, let's get a view of your results here for the night. By the way, that, that wreck with the seven that didn't bring out the caution did put him towards the back of the pack. Wiley Cantrell finished 23rd officially, but... Thought for sure that was going to be another big one. We saw what almost looked like a similar situation to what got David Trailer in trouble where it's all started with the three wide, but again, everybody was able to keep it clean as Wiley Cantrell, I believe maybe has not finished the race yet. I think that's him that we're waiting on here as he is still going to try to see if he can't lift this thing across the line. I just don't know if it's going to happen at this point. So while we await that, we are going to go up front where we await the celebrations from tonight's winner, Kevin Winker in the 42. And it is one of the Asphalt Outlaw Racing drivers who we knew was going to be one of the big teams in contention for the championship, team championship here this season. And so far, they're off to a pretty good start as they put another truck in victory lane here tonight. As Winker continues to burn it down, here's what your finishing results look like here on the night. Kevin Winker does get his first win of the season. Mark Beverly in second. Keith Prince in third with Bill Hales in fourth. Chase Greer fifth. Haas Beverly in sixth. Kenneth Redinger finishes back in that seventh spot. Ryan Gomes in eighth. Ronnie Morrison in ninth. And Joey Hickox rounding out your top ten. Finishing in that 11th spot tonight, it's Matthew Fritz for Venom Racing. Jay Stinson, his teammate, finishes in 12th. Wesley Phillips, 13th. Justin Parham in 14th. Clay Cantrell in 15th with Dylan Paul, 16th. Riley Gomes in 17th. Nick Wood, 18th. Sam Batwell, 19th. And Aiden Lunn rounding out your top 20. Randy Benomi finishes 21st. Jeremy Beal, 22nd. Wiley Cantrell, 23rd with Clinton Woodby, 24th. Brody Bentsy in 25th. Zach Stevens in 26th. Justin Bentley, 27th. David Trailer in 28th. Michael Lawrence in 29th. And Derek Catt rounds out the field tonight. He finishes in 30th. All right, well, as Kevin Winker has finished burning down the house, we are going to go get your top three in here for interviews. Stick with us. We will be right back at Indy. Welcome back to the Yard of Bricks. Going to start first tonight with your third place finisher, Mr. Consistency himself, Keith Prince. Keith, this is Austin in the booth. You got a copy? Yes, sir. I got you, Austin. Well, you bring home a podium here tonight in a pretty chaotic race, but overall you're able to endure it, endure the pitch strategy, endure the late cautions. Boy, you guys had a bit of a photo finish there. Tell us a little bit about that last lap, if there's anything more you think you could have done to maybe get up there and had a shot at the 42. No, I was just working with Mark and Kevin. That's my teammates. So I just got behind him using the drafts. Not really a great track for me, so getting a podium was a big deal. And Got a little bit of run on Mark at the end, so I pulled down to see if I could get second. But I think uh, just podium was more than I expected coming in, and I'll take it. Well, it's a great run to say the least now. You know, when we you go to a track as a driver that you know you're not the best at, and you get a good finish. We know it creates a lot of momentum. Now, next week, we go into Michigan, a track that, of course, a lot more lanes are racing, a lot more aggressive racing, a little bit higher speed. How are you feeling about your chances? Maybe go capture that first win next week. Yeah, uh, Michigan, I usually run pretty well at Michigan. Uh, I mean, last season, I caught a little bad luck there, but usually it's a fast track for me. Hopefully, I can stay clean. It's, you know, a lot of times, just got to stick around and be there at the end tonight. A little more cautions than what I expected here. Didn't usually get a little more spread out, but... Hopefully I can uh, get back up there and get another top finish. Been a good season so far. Certainly has. Well, before we let you head out tonight to go celebrate your podium finish, is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? 
Yeah, I'll start. Uh, thank you for the broadcast, man. Terrific every week. Uh, Jay, Joey, everybody over here at NOMA for putting this on. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, of course, my teammates, Kevin, Mark, right there, drafting with them, helped me get where I got. And then shout out to Haas, finishing all four of us, finishing top six tonight. So great run for our team. And my wife for uh, letting me come in here on Saturday night and run with these guys. And thank you, of course, for talking to us. Again, congrats on the podium, and we'll see you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, and now that's going to bring us up to your second place finisher here on the night, Mark Beverly. Matthew, excuse me, Matthew Dyer stands by with him. Hey, Mark, this is Matthew in the booth. You got me? Yeah, what's going on, guys? Uh, you, you started pretty deep in the field. You started 22nd. How were you able to get up to second place? Um, well, it looks like I didn't think I had a shot here just because it's hard to pass, but just got lucky with some um, wrecks happening in front of me, moving around those, dodging those, and then just staying out on some older tires and not getting tires when it looked like might be the way to go. But couldn't couldn't really pass, so just staying in front of people is clean air was king. Awesome. Now, being with your teammates up there at the front, did that make it like a lot easier too? Yeah, us three worked together there and just made a straight line. Can't really pass if you don't have a, have the draft, so we just kind of tried to stay in the draft and – make somebody get around us. So that was the best thing we could think of. All right. Awesome. Yeah. I know next week, you know, you guys are heading off to Michigan, with the, which is another track that you can, can use teamwork to draft. Did you plan on doing the same thing with your teammate there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, all four of us work well, pretty well, or per, work pretty well with each other. Uh, we race around each other a lot. So um, yeah, just going to try and do something similar, save some tires maybe, and uh, use the draft to our advantage with our, with our friends. So, Awesome. Well, congratulations on your second place. The stage is yours for any shout outs that you'd like to do. Yeah. Shout out to uh, all the admins and those league sponsors here. This is a fun league here on Saturday nights. Uh, shout out to Austin and, and you and everybody that runs the, uh, the broadcast and everybody out there watching. All right. Thanks, Mark. Congratulations on your second place. Thanks. Have a good night, guys. All right, and now that is going to move us to your winner here on the night. First win of the season for Kevin Winker. Kevin, this is Austin in the booth. Got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Well, you get the win here tonight at the Yard of Bricks. Man, what a roller coaster it was of a race. You had speed at the start, some pit strategy, and then looked like a little bit of struggle with the handling there towards the middle portions. And then we had a series of late race restarts in which you fend them all off to get the win. Break us down the end of that race and how ultimately you feel like you're able to pull away from everybody else. Um, when that last caution came out, I knew that tires, obviously tires, you know, you wanted them, but I think track, as I said before, was just king here, and we only had, like, five laps, so I was like, I'm just going to stay out just because it, it's going to turn into, you know, a wreck fest, and that's the deck wrap, and they wrecked there with all the guys on new tires, and then luckily it all worked for us for uh for AOR there, one, two, three, so, I mean, that was kind of my plan when that caution came out. Um, was to stay out there and just get track position. But yeah, middle of the race, my truck just got really loose. I don't know. After that first stage, it's just, I don't know if the track changed or what, but it just got really loose and I couldn't really get a handle on it. But uh, luckily, we bounced back and put, parked this thing in victory lane tonight. Absolutely. Well, it was a great win first of the season. Many more to come before we let you head out to celebrate. Is there anyone you want to thank or shout out? Yeah, first thing, I'm going to shout out to my sponsor, uh, Bruce Milberger, Milberger Custom Homes, come born sponsoring all my leagues. Uh, I know he's watching tonight, all my races. So, uh, big shout out to him, he's a big supporter of mine. Uh, second, all Winker Nation, uh, my girlfriend, Shauna, uh, Brandon, Justin, Brett, Nicole, Dylan, all them guys that come out every night and support me. Can't thank them enough. Uh, I know it's been pretty tough the last two months. I've, I haven't had the luck that I've, that I've, uh, probably deserved. So, uh, it feels nice to park just one of Victor Wayne for all them guys. And then, uh, Star, or uh, Nate Cogdale at uh, Sonic Graphic Design for the killer paint. Uh, if you need paints, check them out. Sonic Graphic Design. All the guys over at uh, AOR, Mark, Haas, Keith, uh, all got top six tonight. So big shout out to those guys. All the guys put in the league. Uh, Jay and Joey and all them guys. Good part. Great league to be a part of. And then uh, you with the killer broadcast. We appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. And thank you for talking to us again. Congrats on the win here tonight. And we'll see you next week at Auto Club. Or excuse Sounds me, Michigan. Good. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, Kevin Winker, your winner here tonight at the Yard of Bricks. That is going to wrap up our coverage here from Indy. Boy, what a race it was. Not necessarily as much passing as maybe we've seen at some of the other tracks, but certainly a lot of aggressive racing, a lot of chaos, especially there towards the end. How would you feel about it, Matthew? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's your typical indie uh, when it comes to, you know, short runs. And I think we had just about everything there. You know, good hard racing. You, you saw the fan out of people, too, just trying to do your best. But I, I'm really going to be interested to see how it is going to be next week. Um, even though it's Michigan is similar style to Auto Club, I think the style of racing is going to be a little bit different, too. So I assume... It's going to be very tight, very fast. And it's going to come down to who can work with one another to, to break out the win. Sounds good. Well, that's going to wrap up the coverage here tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. And that's it for me, Austin Green and Matthew Dyer here on the Ghost Racing Network.